Today's video is all about Keynote. This is gonna be the first presentation in a three-part series that I'm gonna do on Keynote. Keynote is available on any Apple device. You can install it on your Mac OS devices or you can install it on your iPad or iPhone. I found sometimes designing the presentation or what you're gonna do on your iPad can be really nice using the Apple Pencil and things like that, but actually building your presentation or what you're gonna do tends to be a little simpler using the MacBook or your Mac mini or whatever Mac OS device that you have at your disposal. But for actually doing the presentation, 99% of the time I either do it from my iPad or even my iPhone, and I can even control it from my Apple Watch, which is really nice. So for the design, I usually use my MacBook, and for the presentation side, I usually always use my iPad, sometimes my iPhone and Apple Watch, as I mentioned before. What is Keynote? Keynote at Space is a presentation program, just like PowerPoint or Google Slides. However, it can be so, so much more, and there's a lot that you can do with it that you may not realize. So in this series of videos, I'm gonna go through and show some of those features. Today's video is just gonna talk about the basics, how to kind of get going with it and do some of the simpler stuff to just get the bare bones using it. I would strongly suggest just hopping in and playing around with it and just see how it works. Again, as a teacher or a student, and if you have a MacBook, this is an app I would strongly suggest checking out because you can do so many more things, not just presentation-based. Before we jump in, though, please take a moment and hit that subscribe button down below. And while you're down there, go ahead and knock that little bell icon so you can stay up to date with all my latest video tutorials. Otherwise, let's jump over to my Mac. So if you don't already have Keynote, installed on your MacBook, you need to go into the App Store and just search Keynote and you can download it. Again, completely free. So I'm gonna go ahead and open Keynote. So when I open it up, it's gonna give you some options. We're gonna select New. So you get some base features here. And just like, as I said, with PowerPoint or Google Slides, it's got some base templates that you can use and some basic things that you can do, just to kind of get you going. So they have kind of a recents. If you wanna search by theme style, they have the basic, the minimal. So based on what type of presentation you're looking to create, they've hopefully got some templates that can kind of help get you going. And you can also save some themes yourself. But for this first one, I'm just gonna hop into the basic color one and it just opens up with a basic slide. So let's go ahead and talk about some of the different features that you see on your screen so you kind of understand what all these different things are. On the left-hand side here is gonna be a list of all your slides. And if I hit the Add Slide button, it's gonna give you some base ideas for some different slides you can add. So I'm just gonna add some basic slides here. And you'll see as I add the slides, the list keeps building up here on the left side. So all your slides will be displayed on the left. And if it expands way down and goes below the screen, you can use a scroller or your trackpad to scroll up and down within it. And just by changing the slides, you can just click on them. So you've, the first option that you have is this view, and it gives you some different ways that you can actually show how everything looks on your screen. Go ahead and play around with how you want that to look. I tend to just leave it at the basic one, which is called the navigator. You've got your zoom level. So fit slide will keep the slide fitting right on the screen. You click 25%, it'll zoom out so you get a little bigger idea of how your whole slide will look. The add slide, pretty straightforward, just add a slide. The play button will play your slideshow. So if you wanna see how your slideshow is actually starting to look, click on your slide and hit play. You can click your space bar, scroll through it, and it'll quit out at the end of the slideshow. Then you have some things here in the middle. So if you click on table, you can add a table to your presentation. You can add all sorts of different types of charts. You can add text boxes. You can add shapes, all sorts of different shapes. And they have all sorts of categories. You can actually resize them, do all sorts of stuff with them, and I'll show that in just a bit. You can insert media. So you can take photos, you can search your image gallery, you can insert movies, you can insert web videos, music, you can record audio right into it, and you can do live video, which is a new feature that it has. 
If you have an iPhone, you can actually take a photo. So if you click take photo, it'll open up the camera automatically on my iPhone. I can snap the picture and it'll insert it right into it. You can scan documents. Again, it'll open up the camera on your phone to scan it. You can add sketches and then it can, because I have an iPad, it's also showing up to do the same thing there. And then you can also leave comments about different parts. You can collaborate. So just like Google Slides, you can share it with amongst other people. You can have multiple people working on the same one. Over here on the top right, you've got Format. And if you uncheck it, you'll see it's kind of grayed in a little bit when I don't hover over it. So that shows that it's selected. If I unselect it, it will hide that whole right-hand side. And if I click on it, it'll show that right-hand side again. And from here, I can do some basic stuff. It'll have me, you know, change different parts of that slide layout. If I click on this one, I can change the slide layout. So if I just want it to be more of a section, click on that. If I want it to be a tile with a photo, if I put it back to what it is, it can change the slide. And you can choose what pieces you have on that slide. If I tap on background, I can change the background of the slide color. Good grief, that is ugly. That one. You can do a color fill. You can have it be a gradient fill. So it starts dark and goes light. And then you'll see here, there's that little dual arrow. So it's saying what it's going to. So I could actually flip that. So it goes dark to light. I can choose the angle. So it could start dark in the lower left-hand corner and get brighter as you go right. So you can change all the different pieces to that. You can put an image fill. So you can use an actual image that you already have. I'll go back to color fill. You can edit the slide layout. So you can choose different portions of the slide and really customize how that slide actually works. Animate. This allows you to animate different parts of your slideshow. And we're going to spend a whole, pretty much a whole second video on the animation piece because there is so much that you can do. But you can control when certain elements of your slideshow and how they drop in. So if you've watched other people doing slideshows, you'll see maybe like the first bullet drops in and then they can click something and the second bullet drops in, images drop in. You can control how all those things come in and out. And that's the animate section. And then the document allows to change some different settings with the whole document. So you can choose delays. You can choose the size of your presentation, which is something we're going to get into in just a second. It just allows you to change your whole document as a whole. So that's kind of your quick interface. If you right click on a slide on the left hand, you can delete it. I'm going to actually delete out all these, or I could select one slide and I can hold the command button down and select multiple ones. And delete. So it takes me back to my original one. At the base level, just to get going in Keynote, you can just start a new slideshow, create new slides, and you can come in. If I wanted to change the title, I can just double click on it. Put in the title I want, subtitle, this subtitle, so creative I know. And then we can put I uh, Adam Metzler, and there's my title of my slideshow. Now let's say I didn't want to have the title or the date down here in the lower left-hand corner. To delete it, I can just click on it, hit the delete key, and that whole section is gone. Or let's say I wanted it somewhere else. All I have to do is click on it and I can drag it wherever I want it. You'll see when it's selected, I can change the height of it. I can change the width, all sorts of stuff with it. Get it exactly how you want it. You have full control and where you can put all the elements that are on your page and you can put them anywhere that you want. So again, if I don't want it, I just hit delete, delete, delete. Now we start with a completely blank slideshow. Now, as I mentioned, this program can do a lot more than just being a presentation tool. This is so handy, especially for teachers. If you make a lot of posters to put up around your classroom, if you make a lot of printouts and you really want to have some creativity with it, this is the program to use. Because what you can do is let me change the background. Go to format. Make the background white like a sheet of paper. Now, if I go back to document, under this slide size, I can choose custom. Now, let's say you wanted to make a poster in your classroom that was 11 inches by 14 inches. 
that you wanted to be able to print out and hang in your classroom. So what you can do is come into that slide size. Now this is the part that's a little bit funky. One inch is equal to 72 points. Don't ask me why, that's just how Apple made it for some reason. So what you have to do is let's say we want it 11 inches wide. We have to do 11 times 72, which comes out to 792. Oops. And now we want the 14 inches. So I got to multiply 14 times 72. It comes out to 1008. If I hit OK, you're going to see my document changes out a little bit. Let's go a little bit further. There we go. This document is now 11 inches by 14. So when I go to print it, I can use a piece of paper that's 11 by 14 and it will fit perfectly on that paper. If you wanted to do something on an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper, then all you have to do is multiply eight and a half by 72 and 11 by 72 and set that slide size to be that. So from here, if I wanted to insert some text, I click on the text tool and you'll see some text appear. So let's say I'm going to get really creative here and make a garage sale sign. Type in garage sale. Now, if I move it around, you're going to notice when I hit a certain point, that there's a yellow line that appears. That's letting me know where the center is. So if I want that absolutely centered, I just move it around and keep sliding it until I see that center. And the same thing will happen going down the page too. It'll give you different ratios. So there's like the center. There's kind of just a little bit under it. So it gives you different alignment points, which can be really, really handy. But let's say I want to make that text a little bigger. I'm going to highlight all the text. I'm going to come over to Format. And now under Format, I've got all the different settings that you're used to seeing in any type of word processor. So I can change the font size, make it really big. Now you'll see it switched to two lines because I only told it to be that big. So what I have to do is enlarge the box and then readjust it until I see that yellow line saying it's in the center. Back, whoop. Format and I want to format the text. So I can select the type of, you know, the text style I want to use. I can select if it's italicized, medium, bold, all those different properties. You can make it bold, italicized, underline. You can change the character styles. You can change its alignment, its indentation, you know, how centered it is vertically and horizontally in both these places. If you're using bullets, you can adjust the spacing. If you're using um, if you have multiple lines of text, you can control the spacing of those, just like you would in any type of text editor. Under a range, it gives you even more control for where you want it to position. You can angle it left or right, have it rotated, so you can see where the creativity comes. If you remember the posters that used to have the, the rip tabs, so you could actually duplicate this all the way across, so you made like those old-style rip tabs you had on posters that you always saw like in the grocery store and things like that. Let's undo all that, get right back. So you, whoops. Ah. There we go, arrange. So it allows you to change all sorts of different pieces here. You can, again, change the size. You can change the position. This is kind of a slower way of just clicking and dragging it around. So this position one will just move where it is left to right. So sometimes if you want text to be in the exact same spot going all the way down, you can actually copy and paste this to all the different elements. Again, you can flip horizontally, you can mirror it, do all sorts of crazy stuff. You can lock it so that it doesn't happen again. So it really allows you to customize that text. Then you can come up to shape tools. Let's say we want to put in like a big arrow. What you do is you click on the shape that you want. You can move the shape around. You can bigger, change the size, make it super big, make it super small. And then with it selected, you can choose under style. You, what you'll notice over here now on the right hand side is I can change the color. And if you don't like the color selection they have here, if you hit this little down arrow, it gives you a lot more choices and they even have gradient options. You can insert images into that and you can have an image be inside that fill. So you can, or you can have no fill at all where it's just the outer lining. And then under border, you could have it be a line border and you can change the spacing. 
You can give it a shadow so it has a little drop shadow. So it gives you complete customization of what you want. And you can do this with all sorts of stuff. And then you can just move it around how you want. So that gives you the ability to enter in and put in so many different things. So let's say you wanted a picture. Maybe, again, to fit in the theme of this, you're doing a garage sale in your yard and you want an image from your front yard. So when people are driving up, they know, oh, it's exactly this is the house. So to fit in with this garage style theme that we're going with for this document, let's say you wanted to put in a picture that actually shows what your house looks like so that people that are looking for the garage sale actually know. So you can go into media, you can click on photos, and it will pull up your photo gallery where you could actually insert photos from there. Or you can go right into the web browser. Now in Safari, you can just find the picture and click and drag it in. Sometimes in Firefox and Chrome you can do it, but every now and then what will happen is you'll get this gobbledygook. Show you exactly what I mean. So let's say we want that photo. If I try to click and drag it in, you're gonna see it gets that nasty text. So you have a couple ways to get around that. If you right click on the photo, you can choose copy image and then right click and choose paste and it will actually paste that photo right into your document. And again, just like everything else, if you click on it, you'll see it comes up with all the boxes so you can change the height of the photo depending on what's, what you wanna control. Click and drag and move it all around. You'll see that yellow line appears when you get it back in the center and do all those kinds of things. The last piece I wanna just show in this video is saving. So the easiest way is you can just click on the title up here where it says untitled and I can choose poster. And then you can choose where you want it to save. So I'll just keep it in Keynote. All you do is hit enter and it's saved. You can come up to file and if you make some more changes, you can hit save again. If you want to, you know, change it, if you want to do like a tweak on it, you could do save as, you could duplicate it, kind of the same thing as each other. You can rename it if you're not happy to it. You can move it and you can revert to some different versions. So if you've been working on it and you found you made some changes to it that you weren't too happy with, you can actually step back to some of those changes. And I will talk more about some of those other features in the future videos. So in future videos, I'm going to delve a little more into the animate tool. There is a lot that you can do with that. So I want to really take a video and really kind of do a deep dive into the animate parts. And then in the third video, I'm going to show some even more advanced stuff that really allows you to take your presentation kind of to that next level. So to wrap this all up, I would strongly suggest downloading Keynote, just checking it out, getting your feet wet with it a little bit, start playing around with it to see if you could maybe take advantage of it in your own classroom or for your assignments. A lot of definite good and fun uses for it. So this video is just, again, meant to get your feet wet a little bit. I will see you in the next video where we'll talk about some of the animate features. This is Adam on Tech, signing off.